changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. It's Friend Friday, and that means that we are joined today by someone from the Chicken Soup for the Soul family. And today, that someone is Stephen Alexander, who wrote a story for Chicken Soup for the Soul, Think Possible, but is probably even better known for being married to his wife, Jordan, otherwise known as Angry Splash Mountain Lady, which I just love. So Stephen is a native of central New York. He has spent most of his life around Syracuse, New York, a very nice part of New York State. And he has spent several years as a working musician. He studied literature, philosophy, theatrical arts. And now he's the CEO of Infamous Quests, which is a computer software company that produces adventure games. He's won awards for his writing and design and video games. He's still a musician. And he's a kidney dialysis survivor. He's had two kidney transplants. And he lives now with his wife, Jordan, his son, and two Boston Terriers. And we're going to talk about two things today. We're going to talk about Stephen's story in Chicken Soup for the Soul, Think Possible. And then we're going to talk about what is it like to go viral? Because I just think that's a fascinating topic. But first, let's talk about your kidney tomorrow story in Chicken Soup for the Soul, Think Possible. Sure. You know, it's a, it's a story basically uh, about how my wife and I uh, were dealing with uh, me being on dialysis for so many years. She was a nurse at the Veterans Hospital herself. At, um, at one point there, during my treatment, she decided that she wanted to train to do uh, home dialysis with me so that we'd be able to uh, do it more on our own schedule. And, uh, and you know, it was, uh, it was a very difficult time in our life because she was working 12-hour overnight shifts. She'd come home from that and then put me on dialysis for four hours a day at a time. So we, uh, we, you know, during the tough times, we used to have this mantra we'd say to each other, kidney tomorrow, you know, where we'd, uh, where we'd, you know, hopefully we'd get that call from uh, the transplant center telling us that we'd have a kidney. Yeah, and I, you have a very cute part of your story where you talk about how you finally got the call that there was a kidney for you, but you were out shopping and you were supposed to buy milk and you were so dutiful that you thought, okay, well, my wife wants milk, but I have to go get my new kidney. So I'll get, I'll get powdered milk so that I've still provided milk. And you, you told her via cell phone from the grocery store and, and she was like, you're an idiot. Put the milk back and go to the hospital and get your kidney. And I thought that was so cute. She still loves to tell that story. Yeah, Deborah Norville loves your story. And when she and I did our Chicken Soup for the Soul Think Possible book together, she chose your story as one of the, um, the three stories that she was featuring on Inside Edition out of the 101 stories that were in the book. And then about six months later, I got a call from Deborah one day. I was pulling into the garage at work, just about to lose the cell phone, and, and Deborah was on the phone, and she was like, Amy, you're not going to believe this. Guess who Angry Splash Mountain Lady is? And, <laughs> and of course, everybody knew who Angry Splash Mountain Lady was, your wife. So Deborah got so excited, she put you on Inside Edition for a second time to talk yeah. about that. So tell me what happened with that, because I have got to have you tell us what it's like to go viral because it's something a lot of people dream of. And of course it, it only happens to one in a million. Truth is stranger than fiction. This, you know, uh, because you don't have any plans to go viral when it happens. You know, the, it, it was just a silly vacation picture of ours that uh, happened to go viral on the net. We, you know, we were in the park that day and, uh, you know, we spent, uh, we spent a long day in Disney world and, uh, that was the last. It was going to be the last ride of the day, and uh, I was tired. Our in my in laws were uh, along with us, and we had our baby, and uh, and uh, so she said, "Okay, it's time to ride Splash Mountain." And I said, "I said I'm sorry, hon. You know, I don't think I have another ride in me." And she said, "What? You don't have it in you to go to go sit in the log and ride in the ride?" And I was like, "I just, I just don't want to go wait in line and do that." And she really wanted to go on the ride, so she marched off to ride it alone. And uh, <laughs> when she gets when she gets, you know, single-mindedly determined, you know, she's going to do something. I know, I know I was going to get it. So I waited out by the, uh, the exit for the line, and I said, oh, boy, what's she going to say when she gets off? 
And she didn't say a thing. She just had this giant grin on her face, and she comes over, and she pulls out her uh, her cell phone and, and presses a few buttons and pops up a picture and holds it in my face and says, here, I did this for you. <laughs> and it was it was the picture. And we thought it was so funny, and we we had a laugh. And I was like, I can't believe you did that. And, you know, that you, you timed that so well. And she said, she said, well, I knew there was a camera, so I was just going to try to – I was just going to try to – show you how mad I was that you weren't on the ride with me. And uh, we laughed. And, and then later that night, I said, you know, I think I'm going to post this on the net because it's too funny not to share. And I sort of expected that maybe our friends and family would like it. But um, we were still at uh, we were still at Disney World. And uh, by the time we got home, it had started to go viral. And uh, we're uh, sitting there that Friday evening. And I said, I said, honey, I, I think this is going far beyond anything that we thought. And I remember she said to me, she said, I don't think it's going to go viral. When George Takei posted on Facebook, then I know it's viral. And literally like an hour later, George Takei posted on on Facebook. And I said, honey, I think we went viral. Oh, my goodness. That is so funny. And and if anybody wants to see this picture, just I think if you Google Angry Splash Mountain Lady, it will come up, right? Yeah, that's all you have to do is Google Angry Splash Mountain Lady. Yeah, because I knew about it before I realized that it was you and Jordan. I, yeah. You know, I already knew about it. I mean, it was just like the Chewbacca yeah. mask lady. I mean, it was everywhere. So I thought it was so funny. So then what happened? Like, did the news media start coming to you? Well, yeah, that weekend we started getting calls and emails from all sorts of uh, media outlets. And uh, and from all, all different kinds of folks, and it continued on that week. And then I remember we got a call from Inside Edition, and, and they they were interested in it. And I said, I said, yeah, you know, we were actually we were actually on your show uh, just a few months ago. Uh, my wife and I had like, wait, really? And then, then I think somebody I think somebody went and checked for us, like a second. They're like, we know you guys. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So when Deborah called me, so they were already planning to do something about Angry Splash Mountain Lady, and they didn't realize that you guys were repeat offenders, right? Yeah, not, right? not until they talked to me on the phone. And, and then Deborah called me, and she was so excited, and we both thought it was such a fun coincidence. Yeah, well, me too. And, you know, we, Jordan and I both did interviews with Deborah, and uh, we had a good time. And it, it, it's it's just very surreal because we're just a normal family, you know. I mean, we have we have a new baby, and you know, and we live, you know, we you know we live a, a pretty pretty normal life. And uh, this was this was kind of crazy. We got thrust into the spotlight for a uh, for a time, and and we we talked to all kinds of people all over the world. We did interviews with um, people from you know uh, Britain and Japan. I, we were featured in an Israeli newspaper, I believe. I mean, there's just all kinds of different places that it went to. Uh, Australia, <laughs> uh, we were, the Australians uh, thought it was pretty funny. And uh, so, you know, it, it, it it's, it's so strange. And, and everyone, you know, around us and in, in our life and our family watched it unfold. And they're like, we can't, they're like at first they're like we can't believe this but then you know as um as my you know family said they said oh we can believe it you, you and Jordan are always doing crazy and miraculous things so I mean it was it, it was very funny and I was glad that it was it was received mostly in a positive manner too you know because it, even though she's called angry splash mountain lady it was it was a joke between us that's how that's how we get on and that kind of humor that you know the the humor between us was how we got through dialysis, you know, all those years and waiting for a transplant. So, I mean, it was, it was a nice cap on all of that. When, you know, when we look back on it, we Mm -hmm. look back on it in the past uh, year, you know, having our, having our son and, you know, and this and uh, getting our story published in chicken soup for the soul. I mean, it was, it's been a really, really amazing year. And, uh, you know, I can't express just how, blown away and thankful we are. You were like, is this our life? <laughs> uh-huh. So I know the truth. You were just scared of Splash Mountain. <laughs> oh, you think it's funny. That's a nervous laugh I hear. So oh, no, I, was, I was tired. <laughs> you know that uh, Visit Orlando, the Orlando Board of Tourism, got in touch with us, and they gave us a free trip back down to Disney World. Uh, we went two weeks ago. Wonderful. Did you go on Splash Mountain? Yes, yes. There's a new picture. 
Oh, that's so great. All right. Well, I have to go and Google that now also. So I did notice one thing. They kept taking Jordan's picture and then they made it, they put it onto other photos on the internet. Oh, the photoshops. Those were the funniest part. That's where it went wild on Reddit. And they have this uh, subreddit, they're called Photoshop Battles, where people will take things and put them in all kinds of funny situations. And Somebody photoshopped Jordan into the Mona Lisa. I saw American- that one. And I saw like that other one with the farmers with the pitchforks. Yeah, American Gothic. Yeah, so yeah. That and uh, let's see, what else? Uh, How about Grumpy one? Cat? Did they put her together with Grumpy Cat? Yes, yes. Actually, somebody did a, a great one where they, they replaced Jordan's head with Grumpy Cat's face. <laughs> and it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Now, how old is that baby in the background? Oh, he is. He'll be six months in a few weeks here, so he's just a little guy. Well, so you had your story in Chicken Soup for the Soul, which was exciting enough. Then you got an Inside Edition, yep. one, of, one of the three out of 100 writers who got an Inside Edition. Then you go to <laughs> Disney World, you get an Inside Edition again. You get famous all over the world. Then you finally go on Splash Mountain so that we all know you're not a wuss, right? <laughs> and in the meantime, you had a baby. It yeah. sounds like quite a great 12 month period for you. It's been, it's been really nice, you know, and, uh, you know, I just hope that, that, you know, in addition to all this, I, I can, I can serve to let people know who are waiting for a kidney or on dialysis that they can, they can live a life of quality. They, they can live an extraordinary life. You know, it's possible. So how long have you had your new kidney? It'll be five years now. And, in, um, in July, and it's going well. Like this one is this one is a keeper. Yeah, this one this one's holding great. My labs are really good. My doctors are 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 very confident in you know in how it's working. So I mean, I'm, I'm we're very lucky. I'm you know I'm very healthy right now, and Jordan's doing really great, and our baby's doing great. So we're just we're just extremely lucky. That's all I can say. And what do you do as somebody who has a transplant? What do you do to keep it healthy, and how how does that affect how you live and how you maintain your health? Well, you know, you do have to take um, a regimen of anti-rejection drugs. You know, I, I take a lot of pills a day, you know, and I, and I have and I have to measure them out every morning and uh, and uh, you know make sure that everything's right. You have to, you, you can't miss doses. You have to take them. Like a lot of people will be on these you know drugs for a while and they'll start to feel better and they'll be like, oh, I don't need to take as many. But the thing is, is you, you always have to take them and you have to take them. You have to take them right. And somebody gave you that kidney. Somebody yeah, made well, that sacrifice, thought ahead, gave you that kidney. So you're doing the responsible thing by respecting that kidney and respecting that donor. Yeah, you have to. And you, and you have to make sure that you stay hydrated. And, you know, there, there's, there's, it, it's an alternate form of treatment. It's not a cure. So, you know, you have to, you have to make sure that you do things right. You have to, you have to drink plenty of water and stay hydrated you have to watch certain things that you eat and um, because there are some side effects to some of the drugs. I, I gained a lot of weight after my transplant because of one of the steroids that I was on and trying to lose that and keep it off and, and, and you know, uh, maintain my health has been difficult. Um, my back was really bad from years of sitting in a dialysis chair and I've recently got that treated and under control. So I mean, you know, you, 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 do have, you do have to make sure that your upkeep is, is good so that you can be around. Well, we're glad you're around, and we're thankful that we all got to see Angry Splash Mountain Lady, and I hope we will hear more from you at Chicken Soup for the Soul. And, Stephen, I want to thank you for joining us today on Friend Friday. I'm Amy Newmark, and next week, starting on Monday, which is August 1st, we're going to do something special. We're going to rerun the second week of the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast from early March. You'll hear some of my absolute favorite stories, the ones that I chose to be included in our first 10 episodes. And then I'll be back with new stories for you on Monday, August 8th. Now, if you want to read Stephen's story in Chicken Soup for the Soul, Think Possible, please go to our website, chickensoup.com. <laughs>